This video will be an introduction to the classical wave equation. So we've discovered in the last couple of videos that there is something to this idea that matter has a wave-like properties. So if we're going to look for some kind of general solution for what these waves are that matter has, we're going to start with the classical wave equation, and that's going to help us ultimately derive our quantum wave equation, which will be the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so we have the quantity u of xt, which is the displacement of a wave away from some reference value. <clears throat> so it's a function of both position and time. So the example we're going to look at is a one-dimensional vibrating string. <clears throat> so the string's reference state is some zero on this axis here, and the wave goes can go above or below the axis to displace, and it can also move itself in time as well. Okay, so the classical wave equation that we're going to solve for this one-dimensional case is that the second partial derivative of the displacement with respect to position is equal to 1 over velocity squared times the second partial derivative of its displacement with respect to time. So this is what we would call a second-order partial differential equation. Second order because it involves second derivatives and partial because it involves partial derivatives, and differential equation because it is an equation where we need to solve using the derivatives for a, of a function for the function itself. Okay, so what we're going to do to solve this is assume that this function of position and time can be separated into a function of position and a function of time. This is called a technique called separation of variables. If we're solving any PDEs in this course, they're going to be solved by separation of variables. Typically, students taking uh, physical chemistry as undergraduates have not taken differential equations courses and typically are not expected to. All the ones that we solve here will be for the purposes of demonstration, and you typically won't be expected to solve any partial or ordinary differential equations during your homework or during a test. This is usually just for the purposes of derivation during a lecture. Okay, so using this separation, let's substitute that into the classical wave equation for u of x here and here. All right, so our function of t does not depend on x, so that can be factored out of this partial derivative. Our function of, of x does not depend on t, so that can be factored out of this side. So now let's divide both sides by x and divide both sides by t. So we get 1 over x times, now we have the ordinary derivative because this is just a function of x. There's no uh, function of anything but x in there, and x is only a function of little x. So now it's an ordinary derivative, that 1 over the spatial function times the second derivative of the spatial function equals 1 over velocity squared times the time function times the second derivative of the time function. <clears throat> now the technique we use to solve this is that whenever a function of time and its derivatives have to equal a function of x, this has to be true for all x and for all t. So the value that each of these sides equal has to be independent of both time and x. So this is, has to be equal to a constant. Now this constant, you say, could be k, but I'm going to set this constant to something called minus b squared, or minus beta squared, and you'll see why in a second. Now we have two separate equations. We have, one, we have if we multiply by both sides, we have the second derivative of x equals a constant times the function. And this function here, we have the second derivative equals, some, equals a constant times itself. This is a lot simpler if I make this a negative constant squared. And the second derivative of the time function, if I multiply uh, both sides by t here, is equal to a negative constant squared times v squared times t. Whenever you have a situation like this, where the second derivative of a function equals a negative constant squared times itself, the solution to each of those is going to be sines and cosines. So that's something they would teach in an ordinary differential equations course, is how to solve this particular equation here. So the solution ends up being a constant times cosine of beta x 
plus another constant times sine of beta x for the x part. And for the time part, we have a constant times the cosine of beta v times t, plus another constant times the sine of beta times velocity times t. All right, I'm not going to go further into the details necessarily of, of how to solve this and what every step was, but you can confirm to yourself that it's correct. You can take the second derivative of this and then plug it in there, see that it equals negative beta squared times the function itself again. Same thing with the t function, you can take its second derivative and see that it equals negative beta squared v squared times the function again. So this is the solution to the separation of variables for the general uh, classical wave equation in one dimension. And in the next video, we're going to apply this specifically to the case of a one-dimensional vibrating string.